Hello, I'm Lisa De Nicholas and I'd like to read to you today from The Witch Doctor's Bones. DJ McIntosh, national best-selling author of The Witch of Babylon and the Book of Stolen Tales, and an author I admire greatly, has said of The Witch Doctor's Bones that fascinating South African lore comes to life in The Witch Doctor's Bones. De Nicholas gives us more than an intriguing mystery, a look at the dark side of the human soul and the healing power of love. So here we go from the Witch Doctor's Bones. The Seventh Night Later, they gathered on the lawn, waiting to go to dinner. Where are Mia and Richard? Jono asked. Doing the naughty, I would think, Rydell stuttered. The naughty, mocked Stefan. Oh dear me, you bad man, to even mention the naughty. Rydell blushed a furious purple. Yes, Stefan. The naughty, Sophie said, or has it been so long since you did it that you've forgotten what it's called? The others laughed and Rydell looked relieved. Don't you worry about me, Stefan said, catching a look from Lena and falling silent. I bumped into me and Richard at the market, Ellie said. He bought an evil-looking mask that he put the whole way over his head. It was one of the expensive ones with cowrie shells and beads and cloth and it had things drawn onto it, black and white zigzags and triangles and patterns, and he looked like a monster with it on. That sounds like a dance mask that Richard was trying on. Jono was thoughtful. From Zaire. If I'm right, then the mask is one of a beautiful female spirit named Ngadiam Wash, who was the incestuous sister wife of Woot. Woot was the first human on earth and the creator of the world, and it is said that the skin of the people with this, at this time was white, but Woot dyed them black so that they could hunt better because their white skins were too visible to animals. And when, when Woot became king, he said that only kings should have the privilege of living with their sisters. I thought Woot meant we own the other team, Enrique said, or if you think something's cool, you say Woot. Kind of like, wow. Jono laughed at this. But you know, he added, Richard should be more careful because it is said that when you put on a mask, its spirit takes over. I get the impression that's exactly what he wants, Gisela commented. They were buying so much stuff, Ellie said, masks and carvings and this really huge box covered in cowrie shells. I asked them how they were going to fit it all onto the bus, but they said they were going to post it home. Well, clearly they're not coming to dinner, Jono decided, so let us depart. On the way to the restaurant, Helen sidled over to Rydell, who regarded her with suspicion and disinterest. He was concentrating on the ground to avoid having to see Treasure smiling at another man. Treasure, with her hair newly braided in cornrows. His treasure, beautiful, in a bright yellow sundress. I hear you are our resident expert on all things African, Helen tried to ease into the conversation with Flattery. I'm not an expert he said shortly, and he refused to look at her. John is the expert. You heard him. He knows about everything. Ask him. I have asked him, Helen lied, and he doesn't know, so I thought I'd ask you, because I know you've read a lot of stuff. Rydell didn't say anything, and she abandoned her efforts to charm him and got to the point. Rydell, how would I go about putting a spell on someone? <laughs> he snorted. I see. His plump cheeks babyish. No wonder you didn't ask Jono. You want to do something bad, Helen flushed red. Whatever, she said. Do you know or don't you? Well, you'd have to become a sorcerer first, he said, thinking she was already halfway there. He didn't care for Helen and her brittle anger. Well, that's not very practical advice, Helen commented. Come on, Rydell, there has to be a way. You're very desperate, he remarked as they walked up the hill. She who is desperate has given away her power. Helen clenched her jaw. I was wrong to ask you, she said through gritted teeth. You haven't been helpful at all. Well, here's something that might be more up your alley, he said. There was once a woman who wanted to put a spell on her husband so that he would love no one except her. The witch doctor told her that, she ne that he needed three hairs from a lion's eyebrow for that, and the woman came back with the hairs. The witch doctor told her, that if she could put a spell on a lion so that he didn't wake up while she was snipping off his eyebrows, then she could put a spell on her husband just as easily. He snorted again and glanced at her to see if she'd got the point, but Helen just scowled. I don't want them, I mean him, whatever, to fall in love with me. I just want them to suffer, 
she elaborated. He deserves it. They both do. Raddell lost patience with her. I don't know, he stuttered, and I don't care either. Please leave me alone, Helen. I need to think. Go and do your own research. Helen wasn't happy. She hadn't wanted to ask Rydell, but she had thought he'd know what she could do. She didn't want to hear stupid things about sorcerers, and she had inquired about spells at the market, but that only laughed at her, offering her impotent love potions instead. She thought about Robbie's letters. She'd reread them a number of times, and she'd bought a yellow highlighter and a red ballpoint pen from one of the spouses along the way and she'd gone through each line and highlighted all the promises or references to their future or how he'd felt about her or the time they'd spent together. And then, in tiny capital letters above the yellow, she neatly wrote, You lied, you liar. Soon, the letters were painted with yellow, with the tiny red words biting into the page like stinging ants. Helen had thought about posting Robbie's letters back to him marked with his lies, but she didn't want him to scorn her or to be relieved that he was free of her. She wanted him to be inexplicably, shockingly filled with pain, just as she had been, devastated by a blindsiding blow that had come out of nowhere. And she was growing increasingly frustrated. Everybody, we are here at the restaurant, Jono announced, and Helen shook her thoughts aside. She'd be resourceful in the morning. So there you go, a reading from The Witch Doctor's Bones that I very much hope you enjoyed. Witch Doctor's Bones available in stores and online. Thank you.